Hello and welcome to Straight Talk, Supply Chain Insights, the podcast for your supply chain leader who is on the go and wants to be in the know. And now, your host, Laura Sassiri. Welcome to Straight Talk with Supply Chain Insights. My name is Laura Sassiri. I'm the founder of Supply Chain Insights, and I interview supply chain leaders so that we can drive innovation and a different discussion in the industry. It's designed for the supply chain leader who's on the go but wants to be in the know. Today I'm interviewing Michael Miller and I had the honor of Michael speaking at my Supply Chain Insights Global Summit and he has a unique business title. He's in charge of business development for product supply at Procter & Gamble. And Michael, tell the group a little bit about what that role entails because it's a little different than I've seen in other organizations. The role at P&G is built within our global business development organization, which was originally created to help the organization manage external innovation through the open innovation practice that Procter & Gamble calls connect and develop. So within that, we would like to, as a company, pursue innovation externally outside of traditional channels of innovation, everything from startups to academia to peer companies to Procter & Gamble alumni, suppliers, customers, and both share innovation out and find innovation to bring in. And so that's really the role that I have in helping facilitate those connections across our product supply organization. Well, product supply, when Procter & Gamble defines it, is different than other organizations because it includes make, source, deliver, and customer service. Is that correct? Right. There's the big pillars are start with global quality assurance. Of course, then we have uh, a new initiative delivery that sits within product supply, purchases, engineering, manufacturing, and then what we call supply network operations, which is all of the traditional functions that you would think of in your supply chain organization from transportation, warehousing, planning, Uh, Artwork management sits within their customer team collaborations or their business collaborations. And, you know, I've always had a lot of respect for P&G. In fact, I'm a P&G alum, but, you know, I was excited when you were willing to to tell your story because I know P&G has spent a lot of energy thinking about how to really partner with innovation and drive that into the processes. So why don't you give the voiceover of the presentation you gave at the summit, of course, you're not going to give the whole 30 minutes, but in essence, share the insights of your story. So the topic that we really talked about at the summit was Procter & Gamble's pursuit of innovation through engagement with the global startup community. Uh, Within product supply, we affectionately call it Shark Tank, a little bit in honor of the popular television series. For us, it is really built on accessing a global network of innovation outposts that Procter & Gamble has worked hard to establish globally from the traditional locations that you think of like San Francisco, but also into New York, Boston, Berlin, London, Tel Aviv, Singapore, Shanghai, different places around the world where we find the global startup community. We find partners there who help us work to share with that global startup community uh, some of the grand and not so grand challenges we have in supply chain. And then we've built a process around how we share those challenges, how we solicit their feedback. And then we engage in these focus sessions we call live labs or shark tanks, where we invite these startups to come engage with directors who have functional responsibilities within our supply chain organization and make pitches about the innovations they're working on against some of those challenges we've outlined within those spaces. And then we take the best of what we find from those startups, work with them to pilot those uh, proposals, turn them into, uh, if they're successful, turn them into practical implementations that we can then scale globally. So that's the 30 seconds of what I talked about. 
Uh, it's a process that we've been engaged in over the last several years, and we've run a fairly large number of events and uh, access to a, a no large number of startups and turn those into a, I would call it a decent number of pilots uh, and then uh, a few um, scaled implementations as a result. Um, that's uh, the short version of what I talked about at the conference. So what were your insights on this process? If you had to give any recommendations to other people that are thinking about doing similar work, what would be your recommendation? Ah, so I would, I would, the primary recommendation would be the warning that I gave at the end of the presentation, which is um, don't try to do this yourself, uh, un, unassisted. Um, one of the things we found very early on, um, you know, Procter & Gamble being a, a decent sized corporation uh, by standards, some, some would call us very large, uh, and startups being, you know, somewhat smaller or very small. And those asymmetric relationships between a very large organization like Procter & Gamble and a very small organization that's uh, working as a startup that those relationships can be extremely difficult to manage uh, without the proper insights, learnings, understandings, and to admit it, some coaching. And so we, we accessed um, a third party who could, who was really built around helping manage those asymmetric relationships. Uh, they're based out of San Francisco. Um, but, you know, as we engage in pilots, it's very easy for Procter and Gamble uh, to overwhelm uh, a small startup with questions and processes and, you know, a lot of challenges around the intricacies of uh, just qualifying them from a, a data security standpoint. And so helping understand how to manage that process in a way that still lets us work with the startup and not let them be overwhelmed and, reach successful outcomes and then work with them to figure out what that looks like at scale. Uh, that's something that uh, if, if you've never done it before, you want to certainly uh, engage with someone who has uh, and really take the benefits of that learning. Because if you're a large company and you're trying to do that, it can be incredibly challenging and you can um, spoil your reputation a bit. Also, the, the other part of that is uh, the global startup community is not insulated or insular. Uh, global startup uh, companies share uh, through modern social media their experiences in working with large companies. And it doesn't take too many uh, souring experiences for your reputation to be crumbled uh, by acting poorly or, or overwhelming a startup. Well, great insights because, you know, P&G can be a behemoth. <laughs> And it's definitely typically working with a smaller company. And I have a lot of companies that ask me, well, how do I effectively work with P&G? So I was so glad to hear those insights. Let's shift gears a little bit. You know, you'd never been to the Global Summit. People were talking about different approaches. What was your takeaway from the summit in terms of, you know, what your insights were? I thought it was great. Uh, I thought it was a, a terrific mix. Of, of different size companies, different um, industry uh, representation, um, different levels within organizations from kind of top to middle to operating level. Um, there were uh, you know, a few key providers there of different kinds of technologies who were working to advance technology platforms. Uh, I found it a great um, opportunity to interact in a very focused um, way that was intimate enough to be able to step aside and have a conversation and not just be overwhelmed by the, um, when you go to other conferences where there are just thousands of people around and you're, you're constantly being uh, pursued by uh, service providers um, and you just don't have time to just engage in a conversation about what's, what's the real challenge uh, that you've got, how are you working on it, how are you thinking about it uh, in an informal way. And it, and it was just great for that. Well, thank you so much. You know, it's designed to stimulate a different kind of conversation. And 
You know, if you had to give advice to other people that are listening to this, that are trying to drive innovation, what advice would you have for them? You know, how do they need to think about this differently? I, I would say that the any of the traditional avenues that you've been pursuing for innovation are likely to help you create incremental improvement, but really fall short of achieving significant innovation uh, at a high level. And so if you, if you want to do that, I think you've got to step out and search for new and different ways to engage the places, the people, the organizations, the ecosystems that are really pursuing, driving, and, uh, and, and testing and poking that innovation, um, whether it's your conference, whether it's the global startup community through um, facilitating third parties, uh, whether it's engaging the startup communities built around universities uh, in ways and conversations that you haven't done before. And I think when you do that, your your universe expands exponentially in terms of the potential solution sets that you have an opportunity to consider to drive true innovation that gets you uh, a a whole bunch of leap onto the next S-curve as opposed to the traditional um, incremental improvement that for too long we thought was true innovation. Well, Michael, thank you so much for coming to the show and the event and sharing your insights here. For those that are interested in the full presentation and the video, they are posted on the website, and we look forward to seeing everyone at next year's Global Summit. Until next time.